Who am I? And furthermore, what do I want? What makes you itch? That's the most important investigation anyone can make. But you don't find this out until you investigate it. So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? How would you really enjoy spending your life? Because if you say that money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. Forget the money. After all, if you do really like what you're doing, you can eventually become a master of it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. Therefore, it's so important to consider this question. What do I desire? Hey, you gonna do this or what? You gotta do it. And keep doing it. Do it big. Well, now. Do it blindfolded. Next. Do it your endorsement deal. Say you shouldn't. Section 43C. No rope swing over canyon dunks. Like what's happening? Do what they say you can. Can you? Because there are those who don't and those who do. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Clyde Field on the beautiful campus of Utah Valley University for today's whack matchup between the visiting Lancers of California Baptist and the hometown Wolverines of Utah Valley. Alongside Thomas Loomis, I'm Brandon Crow. Thank you for letting us be a part of your Saturday evening here on the WAC Digital Network. Utah Valley comes into this one still undefeated in conference play and looking to continue to defend their hometown and home field at Clyde Field. Utah Valley was victorious Thursday night and a big victory, 2-0 over the Roadrunners of CSUB. Blake Frischneck scored his seventh goal in seven straight games today. He's looking for number eight, Thomas. Yeah, you know, this is a kid that dealt with a little bit of injury last year and uh, really kind of came into this year with a chip on his shoulder with something to prove because he expected this type of, of play from himself last year and the team did as well. And, and I think because of that, they missed out on, you know, really making it far in, in the conference tournament or qualifying as they would have hoped. And uh, this year he's just proven a point that not only is he one of the most, uh, I would say, talented and decisive forwards in WAC conference, but, you know, he's competing across the nation. The single season record for goals scored at Utah Valley is nine, so he's just too shy away. Most likely, he is a Vegas man, and if you're going down to Vegas and putting any money on the odds, I would say that the odds are in favor that he will most likely pass that this season. Game on between the Lancers and the Wolverines from Clyde Field in Orem, Utah. The Wolverines will be going from left to right, as you see it and we see it in their home whites with the green trim. The Lancers from Southern California will be going from right to left in their navy blues with the white letters. Mitch Jensen, Utah Valley goalkeeper in his burgundy, Outfit. Maybe he's a fan of Anchorman, not sure. <laughs> I don't know who is it. <laughs> and Jensen sends a high booming kick. Weather conditions significantly better than Thursday. Thursday night's game time starting temperature was 35 degrees. Today it's about 65. No precipitation in the forecast. Blue skies. Perfect soccer weather. No, yeah, exactly right. Like today is absolutely perfect if you're on that field and then flying around. Perfect temperature and, uh, yeah, a lot better 
than 32 degrees with that wind chill the other night. Here comes Utah Valley. There is Blake Frischnicht. Wolverine's going to switch it up to the near side now in Brown. Brown trying to punch it down low. Gets intercepted by the Lancers. Looking for an outlet is Heckenberg. Finally passes it back to Aguirre. And they play it all the way back to Escui. Lancers come into this one with an overall record, 3-7-2. and two. Two four and one away, and in conference play they are two one and one. Yeah, moving up from the the D two level uh, this year, they were a solid D two program and very deserving to come and, and move into the Division one level. And so, you know, it's a little bit of a test. Obviously, you're going to face teams in, in the WAC and across the country once you get to the D one level that the physicality and the athleticism just raises. And so. Um, I'm sure it's been a little interesting making that move, but they are an absolute talented squad. And, uh, you know, these teams from California always have a very, very talented group. So it's definitely going to be a test. And it's not going not to be anything easy for the Wolverines tonight. Longmire looking for Vargas, a little bit too far. The second straight California team that Utah Valley has faced this week. Again, Bakersfield on Thursday, which they are victorious. And now the Lancers from California Baptist here today. A, a great addition to the conference, the Lancers have been. As the co conference continues to grow, of course, new teams will be joining Southern Utah University. Excuse me, Dixie State among some. Yeah, that would be a great addition, UVU being the only Division One team in the, in the conference thus far. Zach Moss sent this one, curls this one far post, headed up in the air and over the goal as you see a frustrated Wolverine. Caleb White, like Caleb White rising up, trying to find that one. Just goes off the top of his head, wasn't able to get over it enough to keep that down and on frame. Unfortunate. It's a good ball in by Zach Moss and... Good first opportunity for the Wolverines. Just need to do a better job keeping that down and really testing the goalkeeper out. And they did plenty of testing against goalkeepers on Thursday. Bell, the Bermudan, showing off his skill. Single-handedly keeping that game 2-0 could have been a lot worse. So Utah Valley has had their fair share of, of keepers to go against, and they put goals virtually behind almost every one that they've seen so far this year. Yeah, you're exactly right. That that could have been a lot more high-scoring game. Uh, a little unfortunate on pos a possible couple missed calls and uh, just missed opportunities. But if they can play with that type of precision tonight to create enough opportunities and keep possession of the ball enough in their half, that's going to be the difference uh, that we haven't seen really on any of the, the other games this season. That was the best that I think that they've played collectively and kept possession of the ball. And against a team like this that's going to be very stout defensively, they're going to have to figure out ways that they can break them down. And again, from here on out for both of these teams, conference play does not get any easier. So they've got to make sure that they capitalize on the task at hand and take it one game at a time. I know cliche, coach speak, but that's exactly what you need to do in a conference like this. Yeah, you're exactly right because Cal Baptist is coming off uh, an incredible couple wins. They absolutely smashed and demolished UNLV 4-0 and then upset uh, Air Force, who's ranked number 25 right now at the moment in the country. So they have some great momentum coming into this game, and, and they want to make a run you know, in this conference so that they can qualify for the WAC tournament in a few more games here. So you're exactly right. It's just going to get more and more competitive with the next few games going on. And the Falcons from Air Force also dropped today as well against the Roadrunners from CSUB, who left here on Thursday to go to Colorado. Utah Valley and Cal Baptist University still feeling each other out here in the first six minutes. No real opportunities for either squad quite yet. And Blake Frischneck's opening goal, the seventh in seven games, came in the tenth minute 
on Thursday. And an errant kick off of Eskuin puts Utah Valley in a very great spot here. See what Zach Moss has in store with this throw in. And he's going to lay it on the floor, and Caleb White's going to come over. Here's the running two-handed toss into the box. Ball bouncing around, and the shot deflected, still in play, however, in the back of the net! Alec Felix for Utah Valley, 1-0 in the seventh. Exactly what the Wolverines want, goal in the first 10 minutes, uh, even beating their other night goal at the 10th minute. It's absolutely incredible start. Those long throw-ins are so dangerous and so effective if you can do them right. You hear Coach Moss talking before, Let's crash on the six-yard box. Make sure that someone's there in the corner. Blake Frischnick does just enough. Doesn't even connect initially with the header, but does enough to flick it on into the mix. There's just so much chaos in there as we watch the replay. Gets enough on it. Falls defeat. Zaire hits it first time, or Luis Vargas deflects perfectly as you want it to Alec Felix in the right position at the right time and finishes at home. Yeah, looked initially on that toss. Frischneck was looking into the west, into the sun, and he actually had one hand shielding because he couldn't see. And when he took that down, it glanced off his shoulder. And it looked like, I, I think it was Luis Vargas was the one who had the shot deflected. And Alec Felix was there to pick up the garbage and put it away. Yeah, exactly. A lot of times in this game, so much of it is just being in the right position at the right time because you never know what type of deflection can happen, especially in the box. Um, you know, as that ball gets in there, there's going to be shots taken at any moment. Defenders sliding, flying in, just trying to do anything they can to keep it away from their goal. And if you're in the right position anticipating that deflection, a lot of those times you can have nice stats put on, put on your sheet with just tapping goals uh, that are, you know, super easy. So awesome, awesome start for the Wolverines. Alec Felix is happy with that. And, again, it's, it's Blake Frischnick that's, getting on the end of it and initially starting and creating that goal. That goal is Felix's third on the season. Third in 12 games. Brown on his horse, trying to chase it down toward the end line. Brown comes away with it. Brown gets taken down outside the box. Referee says play on. The Lancers in frantic mode, trying to do everything they can to prevent a second goal here. It's Utah Valley now in a frenzy. Was a really good ball there by Ahmed Longmire. Mark Brown from the right back position getting in and around the corner. Uh, you know, those are difficult, especially when you're facing the byline trying to make a save. Defender goes to, you know, win that and cuts it almost perfectly to Mark Brown, but makes a good reaction uh, save to not let Mark Brown get in behind. So it's decent opportunities that you want to keep having for the Wolverines. Ahmed Longmire celebrating a birthday yesterday. One of three Wolverines to have their birthday here in the month of October. And he's one of those athletic guys that Coach Moss loves, putting him in the back part of this pitch because his vision and with that leg, you, like you just mentioned, he can create those outlet passes and hit those forwards when he needs to. Yeah, he's, he's one of the more technical center backs that we've seen you know, out of UVU in a long time. He's got a great left foot. That, yeah, you give him some space and time and some vision to find someone going forward, and he's going to put it on a dime. Very athletic kid that initially started at the left back position on his left foot. He's very good at attacking and getting forward, and he's moved into that center back position and done a very, very good job. Now see how the Lancers from CBU respond. Some of the more vital parts in a match are the few minutes right after a goal is scored for either team. And twisting and knifing his way up the pitch for the Lancers. With Gonzalez, ball penetrating deep into Utah Valley territory before it's taken away by the Wolverines. Jaden Wagner gets a deflection on it, eventually goes off of the Lancers. And Wagner will throw it in from the far side.
Wagner's rainbow toss headed in the air by Frischneck, taken down by Vargas. And still Wolverine ball. White dancing around. Lancers throw it in. Caleb White with the header down, looking for Vasquez. Instead, taken away by the Lancers. It's a good play here by the Lancers. Dribbling toward the outside of the box, cuts toward that end line. Solid defense there by Jaden Wagner. And this one will go on top of the net in a Mitch Jensen goal kick. Yeah, that's one of those plays was where Zaire Vasquez holding the ball just a little bit too long. I think that the rhythm there was, was not very efficient by the Wolverines. And so it, it put them in a position to lose the ball, give the Lancers great position going forward. Unfortunately, there's not a better cross there. But... I think that's one of those moments that's avoidable as a Wolverine. If you just continue the rhythm and try to get rid of it faster instead of holding the ball, trying to be too creative in moments, flicking that through to Caleb White. You know, the idea is decent, but I think in this beginning stages of the game, move the ball, gather a rhythm, and then eventually as the game opens up, you have more space, then you can be a little bit more creative on the ball. 13th minute here at Clyde Field. Utah Valley on top, 1-0. Courtesy of an Alec Felix goal in the 7th. Not, not quite a corner kick, but pretty close. Utah Valley threw it in from the far side. Caleb White's two-handed toss just a couple inches away from that corner. Bounced off of Blake Frischneck's shoulder. Zaire Vasquez with the shot deflected. And Alec Felix was there to put it back into the netting. And gives Utah Valley that one goal lead early on. Lancers, ever since the goal, have had better possession, but still have not had anything threatening offensively. Until we go here with the flag up and raised, and just for confidence's sake, Mitch Jensen will keep it in play. Yeah, nervous moment for the any Wolverine fan. That's pretty close. I think good call by the referee, maybe just a foot off sides, but center backs need to be more connected and communicating better that they're closer and they stick with that man. Miss Jensen closing down the space and cutting off an angle, making a, a good save regardless of the call. Because Ruben Das for the Lancers was the one who snuck in and was able to penetrate that back line. Yeah, you've watched Das twice that he's been able to get behind the defensive line there. He's going to be a player that you need to watch out for, super athletic and uh, has some speed to be reckoned with. So Jaden Wagner is going to have you know, his hands full tonight, and there's got to be better communication across the back line to keep track of him. Doss only has two goals on the season, and only a couple people ahead of him on his team, Victor Aguirre and Tete Vacas, with three and four goals respectively. Jensen, another high kick into the blue sky. This one headed down towards Zach Moss, kicked back by the Lancers. Longmire heads it back up, and the Lancers have it in momentum. Here's another opportunity here for the Lancers, penetrating inside the box. Player goes down, ball still active. Referee has not made any signal yet. Finally signals for a corner kick. Dangerous moment there. Does a great job bringing the ball down, splitting both Mark Brown and Caleb White to get him behind her. Ahmed Longmire gets into the box. Everyone flying in, just trying to get a poke or something on the ball. I think that's one of those moments where it's almost either way. Referee, if he can catch any glimpse of not getting the ball, that's a PK. Here's the in-swinger. This one kicked off by Utah Valley. Mitch Jensen didn't see it. It was Aaron Caprio who got a shin on it to keep it away. And here comes an, another attack from the Lancers, this time from the outside, taking another deflection, and Jensen's going to try and hit the outlet early. A couple options heading up. Blake Frischneck trying to find his intended target, Zaire Vasquez, just a little bit too far on that outside foot. Yeah, it's a good idea there. 
Swing it with the outside of his foot. Curl that into Vasquez's feet. Just a little too much on it from Blake Frischnick. But the Lancers are back the other way. They've had the better of the fi last five minutes. Created a lot of good chances here. And they're going to try and test Mitch Jensen. This one goes high and wide. That shot taken by Tim Bernardson. You know, and why not? They have momentum. He hits that with pace, just a little bit too far wide right. But uh, Lancer's putting pressure on the back line right now. They've done a good job. It's a great cross in, and they don't allow the Wolverines to clear that. Very, very testing moments for the Wolverines. They need to do a better job staying defensively organized and finding a way to clear that ball out and not give them any opportunity on frame. First Nick. Vargas, Vasquez all touching it. Now Zach Moss chips it high up in the air into the box. But Eskuin's right there to scoop it up. And Frischnick's still kind of a little frustrated. Still trying to find his rhythm. It's been past 10 minutes, so he's hungry for that goal. Caleb White gets contact. Referee playing advantage. Caprio to Wagner. Now White back to Caprio. Caprio trying to chip this one up to Frischnick. Not enough pace on it. Gets taken down by Brinius. And Jensen calls off his teammates, scoops it up. Thought about getting that one out there a little bit quicker. Instead takes his time. White quickly to Felix, the goal scorer. Now to Moss. Moss zigzagging his way in space. Lays it back left to Frischneck. Frischneck creating his own space here. Frischneck dances around a couple defenders. Gets tripped up, taken away. And here come the Lancers again. Yeah, Blake Frischneck so good with his feet, but it's going to be tough when you're trying to cut up three, four different guys <laughs> as those bodies fly in it. You know, you've got to be a Lionel Messi to be able to work your way through that type of defense. But it's good. You, you love seeing that guy be able to turn and run it at, at the defense. That's where the Wolverines have created so many goals. So as he checks back, and he does such a good job of creating space off of the center backs, checking back, receiving it, and then he's able to turn and go. So look for more, more of those moments. If he can do a better job of finding the ball, that's going to be the starting, you know, attack for, for the Wolverines. that will set up some chances. Nineteenth minute, still 1-0 here at Clyde Field. Utah Valley on top of CBU. Alec Felix with the goal in the seventh minute. But like you said, Thomas, the last five, six minutes have belonged to the Lancers. And here the Lancers are in the box yet again, threatening. And this one's snuffed out there by Aaron Caprio. But the Lancers again knocking on the door of Utah Valley. Yeah, completely shift of momentum and energy. It's a great response by, by the Lancers. Can't ask for anything more from their coach. Ruben Das will step off, checking on to the pitch. It's Sebastian Wiesbach. And the Lancers try and curl this one toward that back post, headed away by Brown. And Frischnick will have it at his feet. Frischnick going to switch up the field. And Eskowin coming all the way out from his goalkeeper spot to kick this one back toward Utah Valley territory. Wagner all alone. Finally brings it down. Up to Moss. There's another one, ball chipped into the box right into the hands of Eskuin, who catches it very easily, then quickly gets it back out to Brinius. We've seen four or five crosses now just kind of hit into the box in the vicinity of somebody, and there hasn't been anything that has been 
absolutely direct and pinpointing, and there needs to be a better job of that if they want to have any type of other chances on frame. That's what the Wolverines are missing now. You know, there's been that shift of momentum, but they do a good job of then receiving the ball. They have their moments to go forward here. They've got to figure out how can we be more dynamic with our passes, more accurate to create these chances. And that goes credit to to the Lancers for really trying to throw Utah Valley off of their of their mojo and their groove here. Longmire switches it up, goes to Caprio to his left. 21st minute, about to be the 22nd as Leo Fuchs dances around. Set to come on here in the next opportune moment for the Wolverines. Utah Valley still maintaining possession. Referee signals play on. Lots of contact from both sides here. Finally, Caleb White comes in with the tackle. Excuse me, a bigger part, Jaden Wagner. Now this is taken away by the Lancers. The Lancers have a three-on-three. Three. Make it four-on-four four now as numbers continue to come back. Good takeaway there by Caprio. Cap Fantastic reaction slide there. I think that cut off a through ball that could have been a possible goal or shot on frame. That was almost pinball there for a moment. Bodies flying around. Paul just deflecting every which way. Whistle is called. Both teams have had their opportunity to catch the referee's ear so far. Zach Moss with a nice turn. Zach Moss penetrating inside the box. Ball still bouncing around. Now outside the top of the box and eventually back in Lancer possession. It's a great burst of speed there from Zach Moss to get around the corner. Yeah, you're exactly right. Really, really good job. Great turn to get around. His speed just got the best of him as he has a longer touch there flying in. It's hard to control it when you're going at full speed. Unfortunately, they couldn't lay off or find a shot on frame there. Now the Lancers yet again chipping this one inside the box. Jensen in his spot and calmly collects this one as he falls to the turf. Jensen going to put this one on the ground. Yeah, I believe it was Sebastian Weisbach did a great job getting in position, but needed to do better with that header. He wants that one back because it's perfect spot. Finds him right on the top of the six-yard box. If that's down in the corners anywhere, that's a goal. Jaden Wagner fighting on the opposite side of the field with Heckenberg. Heckenberg wins the battle. And the Lancers get taken away again by Caprio. Felix Longmire going to kick this one out of play right into the bench of the Lancers. Uriel Masqueda will throw it in. And somehow the Lancers get by three or four Utah Valley defenders. And the first whistle is called against Utah Valley. And it looked like Oliver Brinius was the one who received it from behind. Went up in the air and went down, and he is writhing in pain, holding that left knee, it looks like, and he's slapping the grass. Yeah, it does not look good from his reactions here. Initially, you thought it was maybe just slightly hit off balance, but probably fell. Very, very weird here. This clock has been stopped. You hope that it's nothing serious. But a great job, job of drawing the penalty here of a set piece just outside of the box. They're very dangerous moments. He's not being able to put any weight on that, on that left knee. And he gets helped off the pitch from his trainer and from another teammate. Heckenberg helping his own teammate. Again, that's that's Oliver Brinius, who's being helped off to the pitch. And that sets up the Lancers in a very tantalizing spot to find that equalizing goal when the clock resumes in the middle of the 25th minute. And 
And Leo Fuchs officially checks in. And Luis Vargas will step off. Jensen is putting Fuchs in place in the wall. And the two Lancers behind the ball, Victor Aguirre and Linus Munson. And Linus Munson sets up with the curler over the head of Mitch Jensen. It's a good idea there, trying to curl it over the near post. It's difficult, though, from that space. Maybe a few yards back, he's able to really dip it, but sends that over the crossbar just by a foot or so, but not too far off. McKay Eves comes on for Blake Frischnick. Interesting decision-making there by uh, Coach Moss. Yeah, you watch it. Leo Fuchs is going to be sitting at that target nine position in, in, in place of Blake Frischnick, and Caleb White moves up into that ten. We haven't seen him be too, too attacking, I should say, as far as the ten role. He's been more in that defensive mid position, so we'll see how he adjusts to the game. Zach Moss has a collision with Brian Gonzalez. Gonzalez goes down, and we heard an audible noise from him. Gonzalez is punching the ground and kicking his feet behind. Doesn't look to be as serious as Brinius, but he comes up hobbling. Yeah, definitely got stepped on there, top of the footer and the ankle. It's going to feel good for a few moments. Should be able to shake it off shortly. But uh, you see the frustration from, from Cal Baptist. One or two more of those type of tackles. I think we'll see a card. Here comes a free kick. Another one curling this time on the outside part. Aaron Caprio steps up to head this one away for the Wolverines. But ever since that Utah Valley goal in the seventh minute, possession has tilted very heavily in favor of the Lancers. And the Lancers have been the more aggressive ones on the pitch. You're exactly right. Since the 10th minute, the last 15 minutes or more, Lancers have definitely had the better part of the possession. It's been in the defensive half for the Wolverines, not where they want to be. Here come the Lancers in the box. This one kicked away off the left foot of Longmire. Well, go all the way outside and another throw in for the Lancers. And you know, soccer's a crazy game. You can't have the majority of, uh, of the ball. You can have the more chances and still lose, but... You know, it's just a numbers game that usually if you're in this part of the field and you're creating chance after chance, getting ball into the mix in the box, you're going to find some type of goal, maybe just like the Wolverines. Here come the Lancers. This one gets past Jensen, but it's on the outside of the netting. Jensen gets a hand on it. It will be a corner kick for the Lancers. But the more and more that the time continues to tick, the more and more confidence and momentum continues to build up for the Lancers. Yeah, we just said it. Great through ball, finds the feet, able to toe poke that, barely misses the near post. Miss Jensen gets fingers on it to push that wide. Wolverines are very lucky in the last few minutes. CBU set up with the corner kick. This one currently towards the six. Ball bouncing around, finally kicked away by Utah Valley. But yet the Lancers still come away with it. Heckenberg with the left foot trying to switch up the field. Kicked out of the box by Jaden Wagner. Zach Moss brings it back down to Wagner. Just shy of the half hour mark. A little over 15 minutes left to play. Here in the first frame, Utah Valley again on top, 1-0. And the Lancers knocking on the door and making Utah Valley sweat a little bit here at home. Brown with the turn. Goes up to Felix, the goal scorer for the Wolverines. Now Leo Fuchs. Fuchs still has it. Fuchs getting pestered from behind. Lancers swarming the ball on their defensive side. Lancers continue to keep possession and maintain their footing. The referee calls a foul. It was playing advantage until the Utah Valley took it away. It'll be another free kick. This is the fourth free kick for the Lancers in the last, like, three minutes. Watch the replay there, the almost 
near goal for the Lancers. Probably best chance of the game, maybe other than that header, straight into Mitch Jensen's hands. But again, another free kick. They're going to send their bigs into the box, try to chip this just over the line, see if they can find someone's head. Linus Manson trying to chip this one on the outside of the box, headed away again by Utah Valley. Caleb White trying to chase it down, but it goes out. It'll be another throw in for the Lancers. Yeah, you watched as, as Munson there just mishit that, came off more of the outside of his foot, going to the outside of the box there. See him slap his hands in frustration as he mishits that one. Lancers again with the ball inside the box, and a goal kick is awarded to Mitch Jensen as we see Pe Pena, Garza, and Rice. Checking into the match now for Utah Valley. Caleb White will step off. It looks like Zach Moss will step off as well, along with Zaire Vasquez. Yeah, I think Greg Moss is looking for just a change of energy here, trying to find whatever momentum swing he can, he can figure out as new fresh legs step on. They can establish a rhythm and actually keep more of the possession in their attacking half. That's going to save Mitch Jensen a lot of energy. Jensen swings it to Wagner. Wagner plays it up to Eves. Up the pitch, through ball there from Garza to Pena. Again, the fresh energy and the fresh legs. This is the best offensive look Utah Valley has had so far in the last 15 minutes. Here's a wind-up shot there from Felix. Deflected off of the Lancers. And just that flash of that spark that you just barely saw is what Coach Moss is definitely looking for for Utah Valley. But again, here come the Lancers and a diving save again by Caprio. Fuchs to Pena. Garza on the left. Garza with the step over. Garza lays it back to Pena. Pena with the left boot inside the box, headed up in the air. Fuchs again with the header. Becca Rice has Brown coming to his right. Instead pulls back. And Eves is going to play this one back to Felix. Switches it back up to Caprio. Wagner to Pena again. Felix looking for Garza. Garza gets a touch on it. Goes out of play. And for a minute there, that last Utah Valley offensive possession looked promising, but like water when it molds itself into a cup, that Lancer defense just continued to form right around the offensive side. Yeah, you're right. They did a great job defensively sliding and uh, making it very, very hard to break down. You're almost on the edge of your seat waiting for one moment or a player to be able to cut and beat one player. Just wasn't happening there, but uh, they need more of that. They need more of that the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes of this half so that they can find one more goal. To be able to go two goals in to half would be huge for the Wolverines. Great momentum in the second half. With one goal, these guys, Lancers, are, are totally in it, and uh, they're going to be fighting to find that equalizer. I believe that is Hamas Pena who is down. Pena just barely came into the match, and he's being helped off by Garza and the training staff. And he himself is barely able to put some pressure. Looks like on that right leg as he continues to hobble. And Aaron Nixon set to check in and does for Pena for the Wolverines. Yeah, you wonder if it's that near ankle. You saw him kind of hesitate for a moment, try to move that ankle, see how it felt. I wonder if he turned his ankle on some type of cut in that last series. Jeremy Ramirez also checks in for California Baptist in place of Sebastian Wiesbach.
And this lineup that is on the pitch right now is very similar to the finishing lineup that we saw on Thursday evening with Meyer, excuse me, with, with Nixon, Fuchs, and Garza. Now the Lancers trying to take advantage of a of a lulled Utah Valley Wolverine team right now. And there's another penetrating pass into the box for CBU, snuffed out by that back line of Utah Valley. And Fuchs, errant pass again for the Wolverines. Daniel Johnson sends this one in toward the box. Very dangerous spot and a very, very ugly touch off of Tete Vacas. Yeah, Wolverine's absolutely fortunate there that Vacas does not do a better job of just putting that back on frame. Mitch Jensen's out of position as he comes to try and punch that out. He's sitting on that near post. Back post is wide open if he can just put it there. There's nothing more frustrating than winning the ball and just initially giving it back to the other team. Caprio three different times now has had incredible slide tackles, saving, I think, through balls and, and passes that are going to definitely lead to a scoring opportunity. Makes those saves. Wolverines get the ball, and they're almost their first or second pass for the rest of this half has been given right back to the Lancers. So they need to do a better job of keeping the ball. Movement has got to be better. I think they've been too stagnant at times that the movement to find that opening position has been off, and they've got to keep the ball. Lancers are complaining that that last ball was out. Meanwhile, Utah Valley is trying to pass the ball around and find their own momentum. If Utah Valley hurried there, they might have been able to catch advantage as far as players go because the Lancers were too busy arguing. Yeah, you almost wonder they don't see that, that numbers game where they have far advantage of numbers forward. Probably should have done a better job of, of attacking. Leo Fuchs the now there. for Utah Valley. Becca Rice. Rice gets shoved off of the ball. And the Lancers come away with possession yet again. Ten minutes left to play here in the first half. 1-0, Utah Valley. Alec Felix, the goal scorer in the seventh minute for the Wolverines. Felix now with it to Becca Rice. Rice. Creates his own space, trying to find Leo Fuchs. Fuchs still has it. Fuchs with the touch, top of the box. Fuchs cuts right. Fuchs has a shot. Saved right in between the legs by Albert Esquine. Yeah, great vision there by Becca Rice. Hits that in stride. Leo Fuchs doesn't have the best touch, but is able to collect it nonetheless. Fix inside, cuts out, and just misses as the goalkeeper does a good job because that was a tough ball. You know, when, it, when it's fallen almost in between your legs to where you got to figure out that type of positioning makes a great reaction save with some nice pace hit that behind hit behind that by Leo Fuchs. This one gets last touch by the Lancers. will be a Wolverine throw in. Brown will do it. Here's the play here. Cuts right. Has a shot. Unfortunately, that's not maybe near or a little bit farther back post, I think, is what you want. Try and get that away from the keeper. Good save. Now the Lancers find themselves with some space here. A fresh new leg, Jerry Ramirez now trying to penetrate the box. Left foot shot. This one sails high over Mitch Jensen. A little bit more accurate would have been a more dangerous play. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They've, they've had, you know, a few opportunities at the second part of this half, and two or three of the shots have just been over the top. They haven't been anywhere near where Mitch Jensen is forced to make a save with his hands. If they can test him or keep that low on the ground, I think they find an equalizer. Jensen with a couple deep breaths back there between the posts. Known that a couple shanks by the Lancers. It's really why it's one nothing at this moment. 
Garza gets ahead on it. Disrupts the Cal Baptist momentum for a second, but Lancers again penetrating into Utah Valley territory on this left-hand side. Fuchs comes away, steps inside, and gets it back for Utah Valley. Felix to Rice. Rice again with Fuchs in front of him. Instead cuts back. Does well to lose a defender or two. Nice turn by Nixon. Leo Fuchs again inside the box. Garza, the intended target, comes back to get it. Too hard of a touch from Rice. Goes back into the Lancers' feet. 39th minute, about six minutes left here in the first frame. And lots of space for the Lancers to work with here. Good closing speed by that back line of Utah Valley. Looked like the Lancers were going to try and get behind them. They made a stop. And again, Jensen calls off the guards, scoops it up. As you hear Coach Moss in the background trying to get some extra coaching to, to Becca Rice. Longmire. Looking for Nixon. And this one goes high up in the air into the training table area for Utah Valley. That'd be Lancer throwing, chested down. Nicholas Hockenstad. And this one goes out of play. And Coach Michelson set to bring in yet another sub. Yes, all the way back here, yes. And it looks like Finn McDaniel will come in for the Lancers. And Utah Valley is a little bit dazed and confused at the moment here. Yeah, the, the passing is, has been poor. The last few minutes, they've been forced to play defense way too much. You know, that initial goal is great, but honestly, the rhythm of the passing has not been, you know, the rest of the half. They looked far, far better. The shot inside the box, the intended target there was Tete Vacas. Vacas lets the shot go off his head. A little bit too wide. <laughs> They looked far better last game and uh, had a rhythm that just created chance after chance after chance, and they need more of that. You know, hopefully they can hold on the next five minutes and not have an equalizer so that they can adjust, reset themselves at halftime, and gather for a better, better performance in the second half. Chris Heckenberg steps off, and Finn McDaniel steps on for the Lancers as we are in the 42nd minute here at Clyde Field. Handful of minutes left here in the first half. And with the with the way that Jerry Ramirez just fell on McKay Yves, that would have been personal foul, 15-yard <laughs> penalty in the NFL. Ahmed Longmire goes left to Caprio. Caprio looking for Fuchs. Fuchs looking for some help. This one poked away by the Lancers. And this is a very similar situation and spot where Utah Valley got their first goal in the seventh minute. They lay this one back to Eves. Eves again is able to get this ball away from a defender or two. And this one won back by Utah Valley. Fuchs is called off by Brown. 43rd minute. And the Lancers dodging everything Utah Valley throwing at him right now. Good speed there by Longmire. And a foul is called against Longmire. Brian Gonzalez trying to win his possession. 
and Longmire is being called over by the referee. Longmire pleading his case. Referee reaches into his chest pocket, can't find the card, finally finds the yellow and administers it to Longmire. Longmire in the books in the 43rd. Yeah, more of anything against Longmire, I think it's just the number of fouls committed by UVU that draws that card, not necessarily him himself with too many fouls. But again, good moment right here before the end of the half for the Lancers to find a cross into the mix. You hear that Utah Valley bench looking to their emotional leader, Aaron Caprio, just saying, keep us alive. There is really no energy. There's no pulse right now for Utah Valley, and this is a very dangerous position with the first half just minutes away from being ended here. Lancers trying to equalize. This one sent in toward that far post. And then and another foul is missed, is what Coach Moss says. But referees continues to let this thing play out. Mitch Jensen and company will take the goal kick, and knowing that that was a missed opportunity for CBU. Jensen taking his time, knowing that that is on their side at the moment. Yeah, you like that idea by the Lancers, though. They had a lot of bodies flying to the near post and just trying to sneak that one to the back post. But, uh, yeah, great cross. Good defensive play there by the Wolverines to be in position and... and follow your man so that that guy was not lost on the back post. Longmire now coming in from his defensive spot, trying to take matters into his own hands after that yellow a little bit ticked off. This pass laid off for Garza. Garza wasn't ready for it. No, yeah, again, just kind of mixed communication there. You've got to try and read the type of movement or the pass that's going to be made. Garza doesn't see it as Nixon tries to play him forward. Garza wanted it to his feet to be held up. And, that, and that's been the story of the, the, this half, is that the, the connection has not been there for the UVU side. Felix, the goal scorer, tees one up, deflects off of CBU. And the Lancers clear this one up past that midfield strike. Becca Rice gets a stomach on it. Now the field is switched with Leo Fuchs. Man coming in from behind. Fuchs pulls the brakes, lets the man fall. Nixon does well. Step over. Nixon inside the box. And Nixon lets this one go out of play. About 35 seconds left in the first half. Utah Valley with a great opportunity from a set piece here. Yeah, Alec Fuchs will take this. Goal scorer look to put a ball in the mix. With 20 seconds left, they're sending most of their bigs forward. Everyone but Mark Brown. Becca Rice will just be the recovery man. But this will be the last opportunity. Here's this swinging ball headed down by Longmire right into the grasps of Albert Esquine. That's a great header by Longmire right at Esquine. Great opportunity. Great spot header by Ahmed Longmire. Maybe just a little higher or lower. That makes it a little bit more difficult save. But great spot getting to the back post and making that, that save to just keep it a 1-0 game going into the second half. Well, Utah Valley will escape the first half with a one-goal lead on top of the Lancers of CBU. Alec Felix coming up in the seventh minute to get the difference maker. But that first half, if this was a boxing match, it would not be a unanimous decision. The Lancers definitely showed that their record is not really how this team can play. And it'll be a very interesting second half coming up here, Thomas. Yeah, I said it from the beginning. This is a talented squad that's coming off of great two games where they beat UNLV and then beat a top 25 team. You know, they have a point to prove to where they want to qualify for the WAC tournament, and they're going to do everything they can. So look for a fight in this second half. UVU has got to step it up and keep more of the possession if they want to keep this win. There's a score, one nothing at the break. We will step aside and let our sponsors take over, but we'll be right back with the second half right after this on the WAC Digital Network. How does Costa Vida create the ultimate sweet pork burrito? We start by following our award-winning recipe, one that calls for everything to be made fresh from scratch every day. Like our beautifully braised pork, 
seasoned beans, savory sauces, and delicious cilantro lime rice. Even our tortillas are cooked to order. It's a difference you can taste. Treat yourself to the ultimate sweet pork burrito, only at Costa Vida. If we can see things for what they are. If we can see what they could be. If the plastic we use, we never throw away. If the end of one thing could be the beginning of the next. If we know that less can create more. If we can return, we reciprocate, we regenerate. If we are here for others, if we can work as a team, all we have to do is connect, and the world opens up. The future is about giving back. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. Ready to go? South And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five-day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Hyundai. I promise you'll love it. Thinking of buying a home? Think bigger. Because with UCCU's low interest rates and low mortgage insurance rates, you could qualify for more house with the same payment you could get from other local lenders. A mortgage with UCCU gives you more purchase power. That means more money you can put into your home or back into your pocket. To learn more, visit uccu.com forward slash morehouse or stop by any UCCU branch today. Morehouse, same payment. Only at UCCU. Inspiring smart mortgage decisions. In the WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field, on the track, on the court, in the pool, and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents, the officials, the fans, and our team. Great sportsmanship is about keeping everything in perspective. It's about taking ownership after a loss. And being humble after a win. We hope you'll team up with us by staying positive on the sidelines. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western Athletic Conference. Conference.
who am I? And furthermore, what do I want? What makes you itch? That's the most important investigation anyone can make. But you don't find this out until you investigate it. So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? How would you really enjoy spending your life? Because if you say that money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. Forget the money. After all, if you do really like what you're doing, you can eventually become a master of it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. Therefore, it's so important to consider this question. What do I desire? The latest from KSL 5 News, including breaking news as it happens. And all your favorite KSL shows, ready to watch anytime. Download the free KSL app right now on all your favorite devices. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? It doesn't matter your situation in life. No matter your interest. Whether your first choice our second chance. There's a place for you. Place for you. Place for you at UVU. Place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five-day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Hyundai. I promise you'll love it.
Welcome back to Clyde Field, ladies and gentlemen, on the campus of Utah Valley University. Brandon Crow alongside Thomas Lewis here with you at the break as we finish up halftime and get ready for this second half kickoff. Utah Valley and California Baptist. one nothing is the score with the Wolverines on top of the Lancers. The Wolverine goal came in the seventh minute from Alec Felix, his third goal on the season. There was a, sh a two-handed throw-in. Just shy of a corner kick area on the right-hand side of the pitch by Utah Valley. Caleb White did the honors. It bounced off of Blake Frischneck's shoulder. And then uh, Luis Vargas sent in a blast with his left foot to deflect it off of a Lancer and deflect it off of Albert Esquine in the box. And Alec Felix was right there to tap it in the back of the net. And that is where we stand in the first half. However, after that goal, the rest of the first half, went in favor of the Lancers from California Baptist as they really bullied their way down into Utah Valley territory. And if it wasn't for a couple of poor deflections off of different feet from the Lancers, they very well could have at least one, if not two, goals on this game. But Utah Valley and Mitch Jensen will be grateful that those touches were not as clean. And Mitch Jensen is finally set. And the Utah Valley Wolverines... We'll be going from right to left as you see it and we see it. And the Lancers from CBU will be going from left to right as you see it and we see it. Utah Valley in their home white and green. And the Lancers in the navy blue and white. Game on. Second half underway here at Clyde Field in Orem, Utah. Between the Wolverines and the Lancers. Utah Valley starts with possession. Alec Felix the goal scorer switching up the field. Brown. Now Moss. And Greg Moss going with the original starting lineup on the pitch. All except for for Garza. And Garza, who is a second half, excuse me, a first half substitution towards the latter stages of the first half. He stays in. And Utah Valley was really looking for a pulse midway through and finishing out that first half there, Thomas. And We'll see what Coach Greg Moss has up his sleeve for the second half, but if they want to continue to finish up this game and get the three points here at home, they need to pick up that tempo and pick up that, that energy. That, like you see the Lancers right here from California Baptist. Here are the numbers. This shot deflected off of Jaden Wagner and cleared out by Utah Valley, but the Lancers starting off the second half like they finished the first. Yeah. You know, you would have hoped that UVU, they can regroup at half and come out with a, with a higher level of energy, just like you said. They need that. They need to do a better job of keeping the ball. But Lancers, they're knocking on the door, and they're looking for that equalizer. And if they keep it up, I think they're going to they're gonna definitely find it. Linus Manson sets up to take the corner kick for the Lancers. Hand up in the air for Manson, awaiting the signal from the referee. Here comes the swinger in post right at Mitch Jensen, who is ready to catch it. Good job there of keeping it in his hands. He almost looked to punch it, realized he's not going to be knocked off balance at all, and, and cradles that in nicely. 3 shots on goal for Utah Valley. One official corner kick in that first half. Four corner kicks for the Lancers and two shots on goal. And that one is going to be a foul called against Zach Moss. And you can hear the disapproval from the Utah Valley side. Well, a huge disapproval for sure because <laughs> you see the shot from Blake Frischnick. He volleys that from 25 out, and it goes upper 90. So Lancer's very fortunate that that call goes their way, but it doesn't make a lot of sense, I think, is he's just in the spot. Lancer coming over the top, but you see that call go both ways, sometimes getting called for the undercut. So... Unlucky there for the Wolverines. McKay Eves also stays in the game, was not in the starting lineup. Substitution from the first half. And Felix, the goal scorer, being pestered from behind, pulls back the reins, gives back to Jaden Wagner. Wagner chips the ball up, gets deflected by the Lancers in Lancer possession now. Bodies are all flying all over the pitch for both teams. And both teams are expressing their disapproval for what they see out there on the pitch. 
And here come the Lancers. That shot deflected by Aguirre. And here comes Garza. Garza trying to chip it up to Blake Frischneck. Frischneck showing off that lightning like speed. Frischneck going to go 1v1 here. Frischneck steps around inside the box and kicked away by the Lancers. But that just shows you how quickly Blake Frischneck can turn something into turn nothing into something. Yeah, I know you're exactly right. Great ball there by Garza. Gets onto the left hand side. 1v1, just like Blake Frischneck likes. Push that maybe a tad heavy onto his left foot. Center back does a nice job of recovering on the other side, putting that out of bounds for a corner. Uh, Utah Valley with it here. Frischneck still trying to talk with the referee about what exactly happened back there, but now Zach Moss will have an opportunity for the Wolverines' third corner kick. Moss sent this one in toward that outside. Eves, the missed target. Caprio trying to get there. Kicked back up the pitch by the Lancers, and Jaden Wagner eventually kicks it back out of play. Wagner now pulls it back. Going to go all the way back to Jensen for the full reset here. Longmeyer. Moss. Looking for Garza. Dangerous there. Garza with that speed almost was able to get to that. And Frischnick finds it. Frischnick going to try and recapitalize here. Frischnick inside the box. Here's Blake Frischnick. Comes back around. Still inside the box. And eventually kicked out of play. Blake Frischnick is one of those players with seven goals in seven games, eight goals on the season. He's one of those players that as soon as you touch it, the fans start to stand up on their seats. Everybody who's sitting down starts to stand up because they know that what he's going to do is something special. Well, it's a great thought there. He plays it in a Garza. Garza lays it off. little quick wall pass in behind. And I think that he wants that one back, that he probably should have just released it, pulled the trigger, and shot it instead of trying to cut it back. White, again, big, booming two-handed toss. And the ball was bouncing all around inside the net. It looked like it should have been a goal. Again, very similar situation for Alec Felix. Yeah, it almost falls to him right again. That's almost the same play as, as the first half. Long throw, comes into the box, disruptive, finds its way to the back post. And Alec Felix, again, just trying to tap that in. Great save there, I think, literally on the line making that save. We don't have VAR to show you that cal that kind of technology to see if that actually was in or not. But nevertheless, Utah Valley going to try and keep it interesting here as they have possession. Now taken away by the Lancers. Snail kicking all the way back. As you watch that replay right there, came in. Alec Felix takes that initial just quick shot. Great save. Bounces back. Shot again. And Keeper does a fantastic job just slapping that away out of any opportunity for Alec Felix to just poke that in the back of the net. Very close second goal for Utah Valley. And Coach Greg Moss is still arguing with head referee Julian Trevino. Caprio going to play it back to Jensen. And Jensen sends this one up in the air. Headed all the way back down by CBU. Brown comes up with it. Garza. Now Moss. Chips it up trying to find McKay. Eves kicked back by the Lancers. Headed up in the air again by Longmire. And Jaden Wagner sends a big booming left boot. Fifty-fourth minute here in the second half in Clyde Field in Orem, Utah, on the campus of Utah Valley University. 
Brandon Crow alongside Thomas Loomis. Thank you for letting us be a part of your Saturday evening here on the WAC Digital Network. Undefeated Utah Valley on top of the Lancers of CBU. one nothing, courtesy of an Alec Felix goal in the seventh minute. Almost had the second goal on a deja vu-like play moments ago, but saved right on the line by, by Eskewin. As a foul is called against CBU. Jaden Wagner on the near side receiving some coaching from his head coach. Caprio right in the heart of the field going to take this free kick here. Frischneck and Garza to his left. He's looking right for Frischneck. Frischneck with the header. And that win went somewhere close to Mount Tippinogos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those ones are so tough when you're out literally at the top of the 18 to be able to redirect that with enough pace and put on frame. He's trying to crank back and put enough pace to get that somewhere testing, but uh, just sends it wide. Hockenstad did well to keep his composure. Surrounded there by Utah Valley. Now Caprio played all the way back to Jensen. Jensen again looking for Frischneck. Frischneck posting up. Frischneck loses a defender. Now it's 1v1. Frischneck going to try and show off his speed here. Frischneck inside the box. Frischneck penetrates, splits the defense. Great save there by Eskuin. Caleb White now Zach Moss shot deflected. Back to White. White trying to hit this one on the ground, deflected up in the air. Garza corrals it now. Garza with the shot off of the bar and out of play. Incredible series there for the Wolverines. You see the talent of Blake Frischnick as he takes him 1v1. Player does a good job of staying with him. Cuts off the initial attack. But he splits the defense and has a shot. Unfortunate, great save. Again, falls back into the box. Shot across. Garza then goes to hit it, and I don't think it's just well enough hit. We watch here as the replay comes in. Blake Frischnick's going to split them. Has the shot. Great save on the near post. Unlucky for the Wolverines. Not able to come up with one goal there. This game should be 2-0 with those two, three chances in point-blank range. Again, here's Garza's shot near post. He just tries to curl that to the back post, put that in that upper 90 side netting, but uh, doesn't get enough on it to curl it. Stays too straight, flies out of bounds. Bernhardson comes off the pitch for you, uh, excuse me, for the Lancers of CBU, and coming on to the match for the Lancers, Brian Gonzalez. 56 minute. Good defending there by Longmire. The Lancers methodically moving their way down the field. Great turn there. Shot right at Jensen. Nice footwork from Tete Vacas. Yeah, very nice turn there to put himself in a position to hit that. Mitch Post in a great position near Post. Good shot there of CPU's coach Michelson. Miscommunication there between the Lancers. Heckenberg was looking for Hockenstad. Hockenstad, a little bit too much momentum going forward. And that'll give way for a Wolverine throw in. Jaden Wagner, the two handed toss, the rainbow. Looking for White. Said Felix comes in. Eves. Now the Lancers have it. As the sun begins to set behind us in the west, shadows overtake at least half of the field. Brown comes over to kick this one out of play and be a Lancer throw in. Brown quickly gets back on defense and the Lancers get the ball back in. Vacas. Okay, 
As we are just a couple minutes shy of the hour mark. They're coming to the near side looking for Wiesbach. And that one goes out of play. Utah Valley ball. Fouls called from behind against the Lancers. And the Lancers intercept here. And a good takeaway there by Brown. Fell on his feet. Lancers have it again. Bacchus taken away from behind. Capriel kicks it away. Lancers again still with it. Here's a shot right at Jensen. Just wide. Great shot there by... Cal Baptist just knocking on the door, trying to find that equalizer. Mitch Jensen, I think in great positioning, making sure that goes wide. Alec Felix, I think, did a great job there to fly in behind and poke that. Caprio needs to do a better job of clearing that ball. It just falls right to their outside wing, who then is able to take that shot. If there's better clearance, they avoid that shot. Caleb White goes down. Our mark here at Clyde Field in Orm, Utah. Still 1-0 Utah Valley on top. Alec Felix is going in the seventh minute. The difference maker so far. Tensions beginning to rise here in the second half. Whistles are being called for both teams. And both coaches upset that there are more whistles. Yeah, you see both both coaches on either end talking as it gets a little bit more chippy here in the second half. Speaking of chippy, getting a little bit chippy there. Just out, just inside the box. Yeah, just outside the camera angle. There's a few players going at it. Ref sees it and clears it now. Lancers awaiting the free kick here. This one curling in, headed away by Utah Valley. Moss couldn't quite get there. Now the Lancers have it, led by Victor Aguirre. Now Vacas dancing with it. And nothing doing there. In frustration from Hockenstad, knowing that he was in position he wanted to be in didn't get the ball that he wanted. Yeah, again, Wolverine's lucky that that's not better hit. Zach Moss does kind of makes the incorrect decision as that's cleared. He looks to let that run past him instead of getting a touch, and it runs past him too quickly. The defender steals it, and then they get another opportunity. It's those little decision-making you know, moments as a player that separate those moments of being able to get on a counterattack for the Wolverines or Cal Baptist getting the ball back and having a chance. Whistle is called. We've seen that play so often tonight. Trying to win the ball in the air with the header. This one will go against CBU. And both teams' players now in disagreement. And Chris Heckenberg gets the foul call against him as Zach Moss now lines this one up for the Wolverines. 62nd minute. Moss puts this one in the box, and a whistle is called before contact could even be made by the Wolverines in favor of the Lancers. And an unlucky trip there by CBU, right back to Moss, who gets it right back to CBU. Lancers, again, looking downfield, looking for Tete Vacas. Vacas can't quite get there. Jensen with the goal kick coming. And Tete Vacas will step off. And checking into the game is Ruben Das. And Das, it's a good thing to see as we saw him 
leaving the game a little bit earlier. A little bit of an injury, but now he's fully back and ready to go. Jensen's kick past midfield up in the air. Eves Johnson for position with Brinius. Longmire comes in to kick this one back downfield. Frischnick on his horse trying to get there. Moss gets it back. Now here is Frischnick. Flag is up, however, against Frischnick. As we see Becca Rice and Zaire Vasquez set to check in for the Wolverines. Foul called against Moss. Hard for both teams to get momentum here. Every 30, 45 seconds or so, there seems to be a whistleblown stop in action. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's been a very disruptive second half. There's been no rhythm because both sides is just chop after chop, as we say in the game, for a foul. And so... Jensen takes that one with ease. I think that if it stays this way, the difference maker might be a set piece. A set piece might be the next goal that we find. You know, if it continues to be choppy and it's not going to be played on the ground as much. First neck being shielded. Right us a call. 65th minute. Brown does well to get a body in front of it. The Lancers still have it. In the box now are the Lancers. There's a shot deflected up in the air. Jensen caught in an awkward position. Luckily, sees that one go out of play. Yeah, you saw this. He wasn't quite sure if he's going to be able to get there. It just runs wide of the post. But those those type of shots and this deflection can be devastating for a keeper as he's seeing it one way, and then it gets deflected exactly the opposite way as momentum's taking him. So... Linus Munson takes this one short. Played all the way back to Wiesbach. Wiesbach on the ground in the box. This one goes right to Jensen, who scoops it up. But again, very dangerous, dangerous play. The Lancers continuing to really penetrate this Utah Valley backside and become a thorn in the side of Utah Valley. Yeah, very well played short corner there. They go short and quick. And then they have the group from the back post then crash into the near post. It's just sent in front of them where they're not able to get a touch on the ball. But a good opportunity and look for the Lancers. Referee says play on. Lancers have it inside the box now. Still dancing around with it are the blue and white. Taken away now by Garza. Garza dodging, weaving his way. Instead taken away now. Upended are the Lancers. Referee says play on. Garza again with it now for Utah Valley. Has first neck to his left. Instead goes right to white. And this goes out of play. Yeah, you love the creativity there from Garza as you see the Meg. But you just wonder, can we maybe be a little bit more simple? Keep the ball. Not put yourself in a position where you're having to then react and, and barely keep the ball and not lose it again. Biesbach. Biesbach again. Biesbach up the pitch. Das. Lancer throw. Biesbach with the two-handed toss. Looking for Hockenstad. Taken away. Now Jensen will have it. Frischneck on his horse, trying to pester the keeper here. Instead, the Lancers do a good job of playing keep away. 68th minute. Wiesbach 
And the Lancers, a lot of space here for CBU. CBU penetrates in the box, cleared out by Utah Valley. Wiesbach again. Aguirre. Good speed there toward that end line for CBU. Eventually kicked back out by Utah Valley. And a pending horn for subs. Substitutions were not allowed to come in. Now the full field in shadows as the lights come on here at Clyde. 69th minute, about 20 minutes or so left in regulation. Utah Valley on top, 1-0 thanks to an Alec Felix goal in the 7th minute. Lancers looking for their equalizer have been knocking on the door deep within Utah Valley territory. Finally, they send one in toward the box, headed away by Caprio. And the substitutions come on. Becca Rice will check in. Zaire Vasquez steps in for Utah Valley. Jerry Ramirez steps in for the Lancers. Coming off for the Lancers is Nicholas Hockenstad. Garza steps off. And McKay Eves will come off as well. Clock continuing to tick. And this game has gotten a little stale here in the second half, Thomas. Yeah. I you know, you you're you're almost waiting for someone to have a response. And this is out of play. Goal kick for Mitch Jensen. At least for the Wolverines, I think the Lancers, again, have had the better of the half. They've had more chances. Um, nothing that's been, you know, too scary for Mitch Jensen. But nonetheless, they've had the better half. Wolverines, they have not created enough chances other than that early throw-in at the beginning of the second half. Jensen's high, booming kick up in the air. Becca Rice will try to get there. Very dangerous call not made. I'm surprised the whistle wasn't blown as Becca Rice came in with the high high leg toward the facial area. Yeah, I think he initially went in that, but you saw as he pulled out, I think that's the reason why the referee didn't call that and maybe the advantage that the Lancers then gained possession and are able to go back the other way. But, uh, yeah, you definitely don't want that type of of play it all happening. Headed away there by Caprio. Caprio has been the man of the match for Utah Valley, single-handedly keeping this game scoreless. Yeah, I would say so. He's defensively absolutely the man of the match. He's had every type of little glancing header, tackle, save, just to make it so that they can't find that last touch right in front of the net. He has saved the Wolverines tonight. Brinius. Sets up for the corner kick. Sends this one in. Big collision in the box. No official whistle. Yeah, again, I don't know how. I mean, he get, he falls hard here, but he comes in late to Alec Felix. Incredible that there's not a foul called there. And Felix is coming over to have a discussion with Julian Trevino. And you see CBU's Brian Gonzalez, number 10, there trying to console Alec Felix as well. And Daniel Johnson is the one who was on the ground, finally gets up. Checking into the match. 
Johnson not responding to his coach. His coach is asking if he's okay. Johnson still holding the back of – still holding his lower back, excuse me. But play continues, and we have a Lancer corner kick. Linus Manson and Brinius. Play is on. This one shifted in toward that outside post, headed away by Utah Valley. And Daniel Johnson finally goes down, and CBU is petitioning for the referee to see Johnson go down, finally does. And again, more momentum stops here. Yeah, you saw as Johnson didn't almost want to answer his coach immediately. He wanted to walk back to half, see how he felt, see if he could go. Decided he needs the substitution, better have someone on at, at full pace. You hope that he's all right as he holds his back. He might have fallen and twisted that weird as he collided off of the first corner kick. Blake Frischneck steps off. Zach Moss steps off. Vasquez comes on. And Leo Fuchs comes on as well. Lancers. This one kicked away by Utah Valley. Deflected off of CBU, so it'll be Utah Valley throw. Seventy fourth minute here at Clyde Field in Orem, Utah. Mountains turning a little bit pink because of the sunset under the lights here Saturday night in Clyde Field. Lancers trying to play the upset card. Undefeated Utah Valley headed away by Jaden Wagner was that cross. Poor clearance there initially by Brown. And trying to find Vasquez. And this one deflected out of play. It will be a throw in for the Wolverines. They try to find Vasquez and they do. Vasquez trying to find Rice. Fuchs now gets a toe on it for the Wolverines. Fuchs goes down and earns a foul. And the Wolverines taking their time to it. Caleb White jogs over. About 15 minutes left here in regulation. Tete Vaca set to check in for the Lancers. Julian Trevino, the head referee, signifies play on. And this one need away by CBU. Becca Rice will get it. Play it back to Jaden Wagner. A poor play, poor clearance there. Now Wagner doing his best to get the ball out of danger. Longmire dancing around some Lancers. Wagner's ball still stays in play. Vasquez has it to Rice. Felix. Spin moves his way around some defenders. Beautiful play there by Felix. A lucky play, maybe. Beautiful nonetheless. Now here's Utah Valley penetrating in the box. Vasquez with it. Vasquez trying to play the through ball here. Here it is. Vargas. Vargas shot blocked. And out of play. Be a corner kick for Utah Valley. Here comes your set piece, Thomas. Yeah, you said it right. Fantastic play there by Alec Felix. You almost don't understand the pass there from Becca Rice. These three-footed passes of the game, they don't do much, and it put him in a bad situation as the defender's flying in. Does a fantastic Maradona. Sees the vision and plays Luis forward. Here's the cross that the Wolverines have needed. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. And without the aerial threat of Blake Frischnacht, we'll see which Wolverine will step up here. Felix, outside post, punched down. And the whistle is called against the Wolverines. And it'll be a goal kick for Escoin. Yeah, good good save there by Escoin. I think that he's come up big in a lot of moments this match. Has been able to hold off those two or three other chances that the Wolverines have put up. And for those watching that might think it, it's a little bit of arrogance on the side of Utah Valley for being so annoyed and unhappy being up a goal, it has nothing to do with that. They just have the respect for this Lancer team, and they know that this game can very well turn on an instant, and they need to capitalize at any moment's notice. 
Yeah, exactly right. When you're sitting number one in, in whack play and, uh, you know, you still want to keep that going into the tournament every single moment and it, it is necessary. And you know a 1-0 lead is not enough because in this game there's so many moments to where it can just change on a dime and, and you can be very unlucky to where you've dominated a game and there's one moment and it's tied or it's game over. So they know that that can happen and they're going to be, you know, not, not satisfied with themselves until they find that second goal. Some substitutions here late for CBU. Stepping off the pitch, Jerry Ramirez as well as Finn McDaniel. And coming on to the match is Sebastian Wiesbach, who took a quick break as well. A little over 10 minutes left to play in regulation. The Lancers would love nothing more than to play the upset card here. And Utah Valley struggling to find that second goal. Aguirre. The fouls called against the Lancers. Brinius. Guilty party. Jensen's big booming kick again. Looking for Becca Rice. Now White with it. White to Vasquez. Vasquez has some contact from behind that we can hear from our booth. And the referee blows a whistle in favor of Utah Valley against the Lancers. Jaden Wagner will throw it in. Wagner back to Caprio. Caprio to Longmire. Longmire looking for Fuchs. Fuchs can't keep it in. Lancer throw. That shot deflected off of Utah Valley right into the bread basket. Vargas. Trying to create some space. Still in the box. Vargas somehow came away with that ball out of three defenders. Felix with the shot just wide. An absolute laser there from Alec Felix. Would have been goal number two. It might have been the dagger this late in the match. Just wide inches. Yeah, Luis Vargas. What an incredible job dancing around defenders. Somehow keeps the ball, lays it off to Alec Felix. Alex Fe Alec Felix on his left foot. Looks to curl that back post. And that is just inches wide of that post. Great speed there by CBU. Caprio again defending. Felix now has to play defense. Shot deflected up in the air. Rice with the touch. Trying to find Vasquez. Wagner does well to keep his feet. Now here comes Utah Valley momentum here. Lots of numbers for Utah Valley. Wagner to the left. Surely going to set up a left foot shot here. Becca Rice. Becca Rice getting pushed off the ball. Felix finds himself with it. Now Rice again. Now playing all the way back to Caprio. Under 10 minutes left to play in regulation. Now the Lancers have an outlet here. Brian Gonzalez on the right-hand side. Gonzalez flirting with that box. One-touch pass, Gonzalez. The deepest that the Lancers have been kicked off by Wagner. That's a great tackle there by Wagner. He actually kind of gets beat on the one-two. It's a great layoff as uh, Gonzalez gets around that corner. Fortunate for the Wolverines, and actually off of Gonzalez, it's going to be a goal kick. Take another look at the shot by Felix. 
winds up just barely wide even though Albert Esquin read the thing perfectly and was in position there's no way if that was on frame he was gonna stop that thing yeah exactly you know one thing I've been thinking about I think a big difference is Aaron Meyer going down in the center for the Wolverines you haven't seen a lot of side-to-side -side play. There's only been a few times that it's actually got strung back and forth across the back line, played to a defensive mid, and then maybe swung back and forth across this, uh, across the midline. It's been such a straight and back forward game. Now the Lancers again on the attack. Lancers with Brinius. Brinius with the left foot, searching in the box, disrupted again by Utah Valley. Becca Rice coming in, gets upended, and a yellow card will be coming here. You know, and as I was saying, Aaron Meyer was that really that center mid that held the team together, that forced his team to keep the ball on the ground, to have better possession, and swung it side to side. You know, he almost slowed the game down, but he slowed it down in a way to where you could gather rhythm and then would execute in the right moment once the space was available. And there hasn't been a lot of that composure or that leadership, I think, and they've definitely been missing out on that. The last foul was called against CBU and against Uriel Mosqueda. Rice now with an 83rd minute for the Wolverines. Somehow Rice came out of that pile with it. Now Rice in the box. This one toe poked away by the Lancers. Last touch by Daniel Johnson. It looks like Zaire Vasquez will be the one to take the corner kick. It's another opportunity for the Wolverines here. Vasquez with the hand up. Vasquez with the in-swinger, down right at Esquin. Esquin's been a magnet for that ball. Yeah, he's done a great job and uh, stayed very composed with anything hit his way. Great ball in by Zaire Vasquez. Luis Vargas is the one that finds it and just heads it straight at the goalkeeper. Felix steps in, takes it away. Leo Fuchs as we take another. again. Just over the top, and it actually looks like he heads it going for that right bottom corner, and it gets deflected back into the goalkeeper's hand. So, if that doesn't get deflected, that's an absolute goal. Again, the Wolverines looking for goal number two. 84th minute, swing and a miss there by Vas excuse me, by Felix. Becca Rice. Fuchs. Fuchs going 1v1 here. Looking for some help. Fuchs. We'll see the ball go out of play. And McKay Eves will come on for the Wolverines. For Becca Rice. This is a defensive, <clears throat> excuse me. A defensive adjustment here. Becca Rice, more of the attacking player. McKay Eves going to come in, hold down. Actually, for now, move to that center back position as White goes forward. Or, sorry, defensive mid possession position, forgive me. Caleb White goes down. Lancers get it. Now here comes Utah Valley in the box, trying to lay it off for White. Yeah, it's the right idea. It just wasn't cut back quite enough for White. Lancer able to fly in there and, and deflect it wide, but it's the right idea there by Luis Vargas. Good toss on the ground. Again, taken away. Lancers now trying to get some momentum going the opposite. 
Felix steps in, takes it away. S strong defensive move. Referees play the advantage now for Utah Valley. And again, Felix continues to be taken down. Tete Vacas. Yeah, it was almost like Tete's no matter what. I'm going to foul this kid. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop any counter and let us adjust. Maybe a little frustration foul. But uh, definitely need to be careful there because, you know, if you keep going after that and you're the same player over and over and over, uh, ref's definitely going to pull a card. Longmire. Escoin punches it out from behind. And the Lancers with the full head of steam here. And Brinius, Brinius lays it off for Hockenstein. Hockenstein just outside the box. Hockenstein swings this one over. Absolute stud play there by Mitch Jensen. Reads it nicely. Gets the punch out to the back post. Saves one again. Could be a goal. Lancers quickly get back into it here. And another corner kick for the Lancers awarded. Eighty-eighth minute, pending corner kick here for the Lancers. Inside swinger, bouncing around, dangerous spot, deflected, still punched out, kick save by Jensen, punch back, save again, Utah Valley. Wolverines absolutely incredibly lucky that's not in the back of the net. Three shots right there on the line. The last one actually hit so hard that the Lancer player couldn't get out of the way. He's the one that sends it wide. <laughs> Wolverine's very lucky that this is not tied one-to-one -one right now with less than three minutes left. Jensen taking his time. Finally sends this one down. Utah Valley now in full defensive mode as we take another shot take another look at the shot excuse me again the ball deflected bouncing around comes back and the sh third blast is the one that ends up going wide yeah and that's the one you couldn't see that actually goes off a lancer player that is sitting two feet away from the goal line and is the one that deflects it wide super unlucky the lancers again continuing to put pressure on utah valley Hawkinstein penetrating again. Another goal kick coming from Jensen as Garza, number 98, steps onto the pitch for the Wolverines. And he'll come on for Luis Vargas. And Vargas being pushed off the, the pitch with a little bit more pace from head referee Julian Trevino. Jensen right to Brinius. Brinius lays this one off for Vacas. Vacas to Brinius again. Brinius goes down, and referee blows a late whistle right outside of the box. A free kick here for the Lancers. The Lancers trying to find an equalizer. Can they do it? Clock continues to tick as we approach the final minute here in regulation. About 70 seconds left. This might be the last desperation heave for the Lancers. Yeah, this is a crucial moment. This will probably be last opportunity. We'll see if he looks to curl this near post or put it in the mix. I think he'll put it on the six right in the middle of everybody and try to find a header in the back of the net. This one swing toward that outside post. Nobody home for CBU. Hockenstein on his horse, keeping it in play. Being pestered by Garza. Hockenstein now plays this one toward the top of the box, headed down inside the box, right to Mitch Jensen, who calmly collects it. And with that collection, all the Utah Valley fans can breathe a big sigh of relief, knowing that that last-ditch threat was snuffed out. 
Yeah, Victor Aguirre wants that one back. He hits that too hard to the back post. Need to be in the mix. 